Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have the FAQs, no sequence number, but from August 2017. I had so many FAQ videos uh, that I switch over to a monthly schedule. Um, well, I forgot uh, a bottle here in my cask. Well, today we start with the Lagavulin, a question I got about the Lagavulin, 16 years old. And uh, all I have is this uh, box, a uh, sample box, uh, where there is a small Lagavulin bottle in, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately the other two bottles, the Tadesca 10 years old and the Craig and Moore 12 are there. Um, and the Lagavulin is gone. Well, uh, I took the video about the Lagavulin 16 years with my son Ben uh, lately here uh, on the channel and uh, yeah, for that the Lagavulin went to that studio from Ben and uh, there's no bottle left over. I had a question uh, where somebody asked, well he had a Lagavulin from the, uh, or he started to consume Lagavulin in the 80s, last century, and uh, it was for him always a very impressive voluminous malt. And after several years, he always rebought that bottle because it was so wonderful. And lately, the Lagavulin dropped in quality, and he gave the Lagavulin a last chance, and the quality was even worse. And he asked me, what to buy else than Lagavulin. So the first question for me is, is Lagavulin really got worse? And I believe most probably not. I think the quality of the Lagavulin stayed quite constant, despite the sayings of several people on the net uh, who say uh, Lagavulin reduced the PPM level, Lagavulin is crap, Lagavulin, everybody knows that this happens. Uh, mm, um, we all have a lot of, gained a lot of experience over the last two decades. And before Lagavulin was the only really extreme, smoky, sherry, spicy whiskey on the market. The neighbor to the west, Lefroyc, uh, was quite smooth and weak in taste with this medicinal hospital phenolic weird smell. Um, so this was completely different and there was no other single malt whiskey on the market, which was able to compete with those two extreme whiskies. Um, so Lagavulin was always extreme, always a different one. Um, and then, well, the boom, the hype about single malt whiskey started around the early 90s. And uh, we experiment experimented with different whiskies. Uh, the art bag was reopened. Um, Kalila switched over to single malt, to the distribution of single malt whiskies. Uh, Buna Heaven switched over to smoky whiskies. Brichlerich was reopened in 2001 or late 2000, mm, somewhere then. Uh, it started with the Port Charlotte and the Octomore, very extreme peated whiskies and all those peated whiskies came out on the market everywhere and well we then felt there are whiskies which are as peaty as smoky uh, as Lagavulin is and then we return to Lagavulin and say it's no longer the most intense whiskey there are others out there but the question is got Lagavulin worse or did it stay the same and did not increase in quality or in extremity? So this is the question. And I think that Lagavulin uh, stayed the same 
the 16 years old. And uh, well, in the beginning, Lagavulin produced for the White Horse distillers, for the blends, White Horse. And uh, most of the Lagavulin went into those whiskies. And only very few casks were bottled as single malts. And today, close to 100% of Lagavulin is bottled as single malts. And if somebody tells you this no-name whiskey with a weird Gaelic name on it is Lagavulin, most often that's not true. Not most often, to 99.999% it's not true, because Lagavulin needs all its whiskey itself, and all other casks they do not bottle as Lagavulin single malt, go in their own blends. They are no longer brokers which trade those casks. No, all big corporations own their distilleries they need for their blends. This tale about we buy casks from here and from there and mix everything up, long gone. Probably those old and special blends which cost a few hundreds, yes, probably. But all the major labels are produced inside the corporations. No need for switching casks, sorry. <coughs> and Lagavulin said, well, they had some shortages around the year 2000, 2001, 2002. Uh, they said, well, we bring out not only the 16 years old, which was then the only Lagavulin available, but they said, well, we start the Lagavulin Distillers Edition and those weaker casks, we finish in fresh sherry casks, in wet sherry casks, and this brings a second one, extreme, the medicine of the sea. Wonderful whiskey, the distiller's edition. And then they added a cast strength with 12 years of age, and there, there are no sherry casks in it, I think, if I remember right, and it's quite light in color and in taste, so the the smokiness is much more intense in those 12 years old, which is a cast strength as well, because these not fully oxidized phenols, which bring the smoky taste, uh, did not have the long time, up to 16 years, to get oxidized to more complex, but not that smoky aromas. So the 12 year old is a little uh, intense in terms of smokiness. To the 200 year th years, anniversary they started or they had a special edition the eight years old uh, which was even more intense in smoke well and with this selection of different casks for the different bottlings they were able to increase the yield they get out of the distillery um, but there might be uh, well, a mixture of not that well matured casks with the normal casks at the Lagavulin distillery. I will not uh, refuse that thought. Probably there might be a little, and this does not come from reducing a thing or changing procedures. It's just by selling more and not being able to select the very best. This might have happened, uh, yeah. Then there is a second question. <laughs> um, shall I uh, turn the half-filled bottles for a short time on the top to uh, wetten the cork so that the cork stays elastic and seals the whiskey well. Um, or is this not necessary or even is this bad to the whiskey? Well, uh, wine bottles have a cork which is pressed in the opening very, very hard because this cork is only used once. You tear it out and you finish the bottle. With a whiskey bottle, this is a cork which you use more often, so it's the pressure is not that high, and uh, after 30 to 40 openings, the bottle will be empty, uh, but the pressure is less. So there is the chance that there is evaporation 
beside the cork and if you lie the bottle flat, you lay the bottle flat, then the bottle may drop because of the, uh, the loose cork in the opening. So lying the bottle horizontally for a longer time, no good idea. Um, turning the whiskey, probably okay. Uh, if the bottle is not too full, just there's a rest in it, then you will uh, get turbulence into the liquid and you will increase oxidization with the air which is in the bottle as well, the oxygen from the air. So this is no good idea. What I would prefer is sealing the top of those open bottles with a, with a plastic called parafilm. This is from the chemistry supply suppliers and they are really neutral uh, to the taste and they will seal uh, the bottle completely so that the humid air inside the bottle will keep the cork elastic. Um, yeah. The better is uh, you put the bottle into your cellar where you might have 15 degrees centigrade. That's 60, 65 Fahrenheit probably around that. Um, then the relative humidity of the air is quite high because hotter air is able to carry more water. So if you move the air from the cellar to your living room, the relative water content humidity will fall. The air is drier and it will extract the water through the cork from the bottle. So if you place your uh, bottle in your cabinet beside your amplifier uh, at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees centigrade, then you really have a problem because that air is really, really dry and you will dry the cork and it will shrink and then evaporation takes place. Oxygen will move into the bottle and increases oxidization and the content may turn bad. So it's better to seal that bottle or even finish the bottle in a shorter time. If you have enough alcohol, then get your friends so that they are able to empty your bottles. And uh, there have been some experiments that people are luckier if they are giving, taking. If you're if somebody gives you $10 and you're buying yourself something, then they measured, I think it were, they were sociologists at Harvard. They were measuring your happiness before and after and they saw an increase, but it shortly afterwards fell your happiness. And then they said, well, here you have $10, buy somebody else something as a gift in the mall and then they measured again and the happiness stayed longer up. So giving brings more happiness than taking. So invite your friends, finish those bottles and everything is good. Uh, and then the third question I got was, I never had that question. I got a lot of, got a lot of questions uh, daily, but this was so extraordinary. Uh, I'm following you on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for your educating videos. Uh, at the end of the year, I'm finishing my uh, uh, medicine studies. So he will be a physician and he would uh, uh, fulfill his dream to buy a bottle which costs more than a thousand. Ooh, ha ha! But not too much than a thousand. A thousand. So uh, it's just, I think, the four-digit number which draws his attention. Uh, he has the hope that I am able would be able to give him a personal uh, explanation uh, at which bottle uh, the price and the value. Uh, will be best. He's a very big friend of Lefroy and Dalmore. Well, whew, um, 
this price value function is highly nonlinear. If you have a Ferrari which drives 300 kilometers per hour, uh, it is not only twice as expensive as a car which drives only a small car which drives only 150 kilometers per hour. Uh, it will cost 10 times as much. And the same is true with, with whiskey. Uh, if you double the price, probably you get a 10% to 15% increase uh, in taste. This is very, very personal. Sometimes a more expensive bottle tastes less good because it's, it's rare, it's strange, um, and does not comply with your taste. So what I said is, I would suggest he buys four bottles <laughs> with a price of each 250. Uh, and this will give him more reward, more satisfaction, uh, and he will have a <laughs> an invoice with a four-digit number on it. Um, for me personally, uh, the taste reaches a maximum between 80 and 300 euros, dollars, pounds, a, a wide, a broad band price. So two digit, high two digit numbers and low three digit numbers. Uh, there you get the maximum of quality uh, to price. And if you're moving higher, then uh, the quality will not increase that much. Uh, what is there on the market? Uh, there are those Glen Grand vintages from Gordon McPhail's. Uh, wonderful bottles for a thousand, uh, but they definitely have an, 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 an extra on top of it of 30-50% just because they have vintages and they are very, very good for making gifts for anniversaries. Yeah. And then there's the distillery of Brora. Well, it's closed already, but there are as well bottles for a thousand on the market. Uh, but the Brora was closed in the 80s, early 80s, and uh, there are no many casks left, so quality might not be that good. And there is a Lafroig, 30 years old. We had that, I had that together, I think, with Ben on the cask, which was a wonderful dram. Costs close to a thousand, and uh, this might be, well, the right one for him. He says he's a friend of Lafroig and Dalmore. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope those questions were interesting for you. Uh, if you have more questions, please feel free to add comments uh, in our vlog and uh, I will happily take them and answer them in the upcoming weeks. Thank you very much.